Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. In this video, we're going to compare the Nexus 7 with the iPad Mini. Let's get to it. Now, both of these tablets are competing in the 7-inch or 7.9 inch in the case of the iPad mini tablet space because people are really liking these smaller tablet form factors. They fit into a pocket, they fit into a purse, they fit into spaces that other bigger 10 inch tablets cannot and best of all they are lightweight and they feel good uh, when you're using it with one hand. So let's compare both of these tablets first in terms of in-hand feel. So let's start off with the iPad. Now because the iPad mini is significantly wider uh, than the Nexus 7 it can barely, and in most cases, it cannot fit into a jacket pocket or into a pants pocket, whereas the Nexus 7 can because it's a little bit uh, more narrow, and, and, and it seems to be this is the maximum width of somebody's pocket, and the iPad mini has exceeded that. So if that's a consideration for you, keep in mind that the thinner width of the Nexus 7 makes it more pocket-friendly, although most people aren't going to put their tablet into a pocket. In terms of construction, let's talk about the Nexus 7 first. We've got a piece of glass on the front, and we've got this dimpled plastic on the back. Some people complain about the plastic, but the truth is the plastic makes it feel, feel durable, and while it's significantly thicker than the iPad mini, it feels so good in the hand uh, because you're wrapping your hands around this soft touch plastic, and it just feels like it was made to be held with one hand. Also, if you've got smallish hands or medium-sized hands like me, you can easily wrap your hand all the way around the Nexus 7, whereas on the iPad mini, it's still possible to do that, but it's a bigger stretch. Now, the iPad mini is made from much higher quality materials. It feels 10 times more high quality than the Nexus 7, but there are some downsides that we'll talk, in, talk about in a minute. We've got glass and metal, and that's it. There's no plastic on here. Obviously, this is the black version. It's got a nice beveled edge here. Really good attention to detail. The back is a fingerprint magnet, whereas on the Nexus 7, no fingerprints here. So if you like to keep your device clean, you're going to like the Nexus 7, but if you like higher quality materials and you notice it right when you pick it up, the iPad mini uh, is the winner in terms of quality of materials. Uh, and in terms of in-hand feel, again, you can hold it with one hand quite easily, but if you try to span your hand all the way across, it just feels a little bit cumbersome. Now, in terms of weight, the Nexus 7 is 340 grams, and the iPad mini is lighter at 308 grams. To be honest, you really can't tell the difference. Both of these devices just feel so good in the hand. I've spent hours trying to figure out which one I prefer, and to be honest, they both have awesome one-hand usability. Now, one thing that the iPad mini does to help with one-hand usability that the Nexus 7 does not is finger rejection. Uh, so let's demonstrate that. And this is actually now apparently common to all iOS 6 devices, including the iPhone 5 and iPhone 4S and so forth. So for example, if we unlock the screen here, if you rest your, hand, your, your thumb on the screen like so, you can still use it. It ignores that thumb press. On the Nexus 7, no such, uh, no such feature exists. So if I rest my thumb, it, it recognizes it as a tap and hold, and it does not allow you to do that. That said, the bezel on the Nexus 7 is thicker, so it's easier to hold along the bezel, whereas on the iPad mini you get a thinner bezel, and that's why they added the, the finger rejection, because you really, unless you have a, a, a child-sized thumb, or you're a child yourself, uh, you're not going to be able to hold it by this super thin bezel. Now, in terms of specifications, the Nexus 7 definitely looks better on paper. It's got a Tegra 3 quad-core chip with a gigabyte of RAM, and it's the same Tegra 3 that powers the HTC One X and many other phones out there, like the Asus Transformer Prime. It's not known to be the best performer out there, but it is quad-core, so it does some cool stuff with gaming. Uh, now, the iPad mini has the A5 dual-core chip that is found in the iPad 2. Uh, it's got 512 megabytes of RAM, which Apple doesn't want you to think about because they say that the, the system takes advantage of that, those 512 megabytes of RAM just fine. And as we're going to see in some speed tests, the iPad mini is no slouch. Now let's talk about the displays on both of these tablets. The iPad mini has a 7.9 inch 1024 by 768 screen. That's the same resolution as the iPad 2, making for a PPI of 162, whereas the Nexus 7 has a 1280 by 800 
resolution screen. The size is seven inches, making for a DPI of 215. So a pretty big jump in DPI on the Nexus 7. That said, both of these tablets are well below the 300 PPI threshold to the point where you can't see pixels. And you can see pixels, but obviously they're smaller on the Nexus 7. Allow me to demonstrate. So we'll turn on uh, both of these devices. And it's really interesting seeing them side by side. You do get a lot more screen space on the iPad mini, but at the expense of size. It's wider, it's not as pocket friendly and so forth. So let's take the Chrome icon, for example. We have a Chrome icon on both. I'm gonna bring this in as close as possible and hopefully it focuses. And if you look really closely, you can see pixels, but it's a little bit difficult. If we bring out the iPad mini and you look at the same icon, it's a bit more grainy. It's significantly more grainy. But most people don't hold their tablets this close to their face. Uh, and if you're using it at a normal distance, the iPad, scre iPad mini screen doesn't look really pixelated. If you hold it up close, yeah, it's going to look pixelated. It's not like a retina display. Uh, but in terms of comparing these two, the, the Nexus 7 obviously has a higher pixel density display. Just something to keep in mind. Now, another thing to mention, because the iPad mini has a resolution of 1024 by 768, it cannot play back true 720p video. The resolution is just not high enough. The resolution would have to be at least 1280 by 720. The Nexus 7 can play true 720p video. In fact, let's pull up the same video on both tablets and see how they compare. Okay, here we are on YouTube. I was going to use the YouTube app, but of course the iPad mini does not have a YouTube app. There's a YouTube app for iPhone, but it would blow up the pixels. It really doesn't make sense. So we're going straight to youtube.com here on both. And interestingly, we're getting three columns here on the iPad mini and two columns on the Nexus 7. Uh, so let's move around on the screen and pick a video. Um, we'll just take the first one up here, assuming that it's in HD. And let's make sure we change it to 720p. All right, and let's play them back. This is going to get loud, but hopefully you'll be able to tell if there's a difference in quality. They're both doing it the highest quality possible. So here, here on the iPad Mini, you can't go full screen. This is this is full screen mode on YouTube, whereas on the Nexus 7, it's a bigger. A picture, but you have the navigation buttons on the bottom. Now, I'm glad that it's froze at the same scene here because this leads me to my next point about the screen, which is color saturation. The color saturation on the iPad mini is far superior uh, to that of the Nexus 7. In fact, uh, one of when we reviewed the Nexus 7, we said one of the problems with the screen was that it was just so low in color saturation. And so let's do a little bit of a demo. So we're going to go into Google Images here and we're going to pull up the same image on both. Uh, let's type beach. And just by looking at these thumbnails, and by the way, we're on automatic screen brightness here on both of these. Uh, so you can see that the iPad screen is much brighter. Uh, just looking at these thumbnails, you can see the difference in color saturation. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, here in, in this view, swiping around, that's a different picture. The water is just so much more blue on the iPad mini compared to the Nexus 7. That's one of the trade-offs you have to make with the Nexus 7. It's a cheaper tablet, less expensive, which we're going to talk about later in this video, but the color saturation is pretty terrible. Uh, so if you want the best quality screen in terms of uh, color saturation and contrast, the iPad mini definitely wins, but the Nexus 7's display is a little bit crisper thanks to that higher PPI. Okay, now let's talk about software, and we're going to talk about software in terms of performance and speed, because you already know the difference between iOS and Android. If you want to be able to control your experience as much as possible, Android is there for you. If you want things to just work and you want the best app selection for tablets, iOS is there for you. So let's talk about web browsing performance. Chrome is the default browser built into the Nexus 7 here. It's a great performer, uh, and, and obviously we have Safari here on the iPad mini. So actually we're gonna start at the home screens. I've got some internet shortcuts here uh, to allow me to do a test more quickly. So let's load Pocket now, see which gets there first. One, two, three, go. Both over the same Wi-Fi connection here. And the Nexus 7 finished first, all right. So let's move around on the page. Well, maybe because of an advertisement. So let's move around on the page. Both have very smooth scrolling. Let's see which clears up text more quickly. And again, you can see the difference in color saturation. It's just more richer here, if that's a word, more rich on the iPad mini. So let's zoom in and release, and let's see which faster on the iPad mini clears up. 
All right, so we've got an embedded YouTube video. Wait for that to finish loading, watching that little circle spinning around. Okay, and we've got the Pocket Now Daily here. Very good show. You should definitely check that out. Let's just press play at the same time. See which of these embedded players can bring up the video more quickly. One, two, go. Looks like the, looks like the Nexus 7 won that one. And we turn the volume down here on the Nexus 7. Let's stop the video from playing. Okay, it stopped. And let's go to another screen. We're going to go back here. Okay, we're back on the home page, and let's go over here to the Microsoft Surface RT review. There are a ton of images and several videos in this post, so it should take a good amount of time to load on both. We're off to a fast start on the iPad Mini, pulling in the page a little bit faster, or watching a little spinny wheel. iPad Mini finished first, and the, uh, the Nexus 7 is a little bit slower here. Let's flick down the page as fast as possible, see if we get any checkerboards or white spaces. Okay, we've got a little bit there. Not too bad. Let's do likewise on the Nexus 7, which actually is still spinning. We're just going to stop it there, flick it down on the page. Keeping up pretty well. Kind of the same kind of thing with the iPad Mini. At first, when you go through the content, there's a little bit of white space. There's a little bit of choppiness here. Uh, but after everything gets into RAM, it becomes quite smooth. And again, let's do the pinch test here. And release. Let's do that again. A little bit faster on the iPad Mini. So iPad Mini has better web browsing performance than the Nexus 7 uh, just through this test. Let's do one more internet test. We're going to load up TheVerge.com, another image-intense website. One, two, three, go. A little slower on the launch on the Nexus 7. And Nexus 7 is actually... Okay, the iPad Mini stopped. Nexus 7 stopped and then started again and then stopped. That was a tie. Let's call it a tie. Let's go into this review here. Actually, let's do a little test of the text one more time. Clears up much faster on the iPad Mini there. And let's go to the Nexus 4 review and see which gets there first. Again, another website or web page with, with a lot of images and content. That was a tie. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is voice control. We've got Siri here, and we've got Google Now here, both of which are very capable in terms of voice recognition. But let's see how they, they compete. We'll test it on various different things. What's the weather going to be on Tuesday? The weather's looking good Tuesday. Okay, that was uh, exactly the same. They came in at the exact same time. Let's give it a tougher one. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I just had to do that. A so-called woodchuck, correctly speaking, a <laughs> Siri's getting smart. Um, okay, stop saying that. Let's see. Okay, stop. Next. How tall is Barack Obama? Google now a little bit faster here. And both of these display beautiful results. Voice recognition has gotten a lot better, much, much better. Uh, we get these beautiful results. We get a card here with Barack Obama's height. And in this case, we get a little output from Wolfram Alpha that just makes it really nice to just consume some information there. So in terms of voice performance and voice recognition, they are on par. Okay, so let's conclude this with purchasing and availability. The Nexus 7 is one of the best values out there. At $199, you get 16 gigabytes of storage. There are no cellular data options. The iPad Mini is more expensive. It starts at $329 for 16 gigabytes. There is an LTE option on three carriers now, uh, but it's much more expensive. Why is it much more expensive? Well, Apple likes to think that their hardware is more premium, and you can't argue that it is, and whether it fits in your hand better than the Nexus 7 is really very subjective. The Nexus 7 is thicker, it's, it, it is narrower, it feels better in the hand if you've got smaller hands, uh, but you just can't beat the amazing build quality of the iPad mini. Now another consideration here, and I, another reason why I think Apple prices the iPad mini so high, is app selection. The app selection for tablets and iOS is, is second to none. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of really high quality tablet apps. There still isn't a proper tablet Twitter app for Android, which is unfortunate. So if you want the best app selection, that's the premium that you're going to pay for the iPad mini. But the Nexus 7 is a fantastic value at $199 or $249 if you want the 32 gigabyte model. So these are two very, very good tablets. It just matters on sort of 
the kind of ecosystem you want to buy into, the options that you want to have in terms of apps, the options you want to have in terms of customizability. Both of these tablets will make you very happy. They're extremely capable and they're both highly recommended. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and more importantly, let us know what you think about how these two tablets compare. That's it for now.